Ah, that's horseshit. I mean, I got so much more I want to tell you. And... Clever beasts, horses. Farewell, Witcher. <laughs> what was that? Roach. Wow, I don't think I'll ever look at you the same way again. I didn't know you were thinking all those things that you were thinking. Dang. Roach. A horse is more to a witcher than merely a means of locomotion. Just ask any bandit who has taken a well-aimed hoof to the head during combat. Additionally, many a witcher has talked over the nuts and bolts of his current contract with his horse while staring at the stars shining above the lonely road, though few would ever admit to this. Geralt named his every mount Roach, though no one really knows why or what Geralt had in mind with this name. When asked, Geralt would dodge the question or give an evasive answer. Perhaps this had just been the first word that came to his head? Roach, for her part, seemed to accept the name with no reservations. Because she gets a choice, right? It's even more confusing because we have Vernon Roach around, too. Geralt would grow annoyed and curse whenever Roach panicked and tossed him in the middle of a battle, as well as when she would suddenly turn a different direction than he wanted while he was riding at full gallop towards some urgent destination. In truth, though, he was very attached to her and would never trade her for any other horse, not even one which, when summoned, would never stand helpless in front of a seemingly easily surmountable obstacle, <laughs> such as a low fence or a stray piece of timber nor even one which would sometimes, in some incomprehensible fashion, wind up dancing on some peasant's roof. Well, Geralt would say with a shrug, a witcher's horse isn't a normal animal. Constant contact with magical beverages and signs must have left a mark. While completing a contract in Tucson, Geralt had the chance to find out exactly how serious Roche took her role and how well-versed in the arcana of the witcher's trade she was. He also discovered she was an entirely pleasant conversation partner. Yeah, no kidding, she identified the Umbra so easily. Probably because she's been listening to me talk too much with everybody. We've been together for like 200 hours after all, through thick and thin. Umbra. Ugh. It looks so cartoonish with the coloring. An Umbra is merely an unclean conscience, once tormented by guilt and unforgiven wrongs. A man wallows in sin with loose women and can't sleep at night, then invents hokey about some umbra or phantom and blabbers about it at the tavern. According to some philosophers, everything we do in life leaves a permanent trace in the delicate matter which makes up our souls. Evil deeds, especially harm done to innocent creatures, can torment the soul of a sinner and cause it to remain restless, even after death. While traveling through Tucson, Geralt discovered there might be a grain of truth in these theories and folk beliefs. He came across a hermit, whose sleep was troubled by some invisible phantom. Geralt determined this phantom was an Umbra, the ghost of a recently deceased knight who had committed a terrible deed while alive, and now visited the hermit to demand forgiveness. In his wraithly form, he drank her blood and systematically deprived her of life energy. The Umbra appeared to the hermit as a horse, for the evil deed the knight had committed was to flog his own mount to death. The knight's spirit was unaware of the demonic role he had assumed in the afterlife. Yeah, this whole thing isn't even related to the hermit and she was involved. Geralt managed to figure out the key to freeing the knight's ghost was to forgive him in the name of the hermit. Via Roach. Who we can no longer communicate with. That makes me a little bit sad, but hey. That was nice. Getting to know what she was really thinking all this time. Witcher. Just wondering, how are you feeling now? What do you have to sell? I'd like to take a look. Well, you still seem a little bit sleep deprived, but maybe from tonight on, you'll be able to get some good rest. Okay, cool. I don't actually need anything from you, unless if you want to buy my swords and stuff, which you don't. Fair enough. Take care now. Goodbye. Have a nice night of sleep tonight. Is there a cave behind her? Oh. Oh, 
it's more her storage place. It's not really a cave. Oh. Oh. Is this really okay? She gave me 60 potatoes already. And now I'm gonna take all of her reserves? Well, it's too late, I guess. <laughs> How many do I have in total now? My gosh. 47 potatoes. Oh, 147 potatoes. My god. Awesome. I'll never run out of food. Thank you so much, Hermit. I'll definitely come back and visit you again. Ask you about how well you've been sleeping in all these days. Alright, Roach, let's go. Oh, there's still so many things I want to talk to Roach about. Like which saddle or blinder do you actually prefer? But just now, I guess the ones that we saw weren't too bad. The golden blinders. Whoa there, Roach. Duntine Crossroads. Dear Traveler, you have entered the territory of Duntine, lands belonging to the nobly born Sir Roderick. If you wish to pay him a visit, walk westward from here, and you shall surely happen upon his castle. If, however, you seek a route to the Pitapata River crossing, you should make your way north. Yeah, I think we were there before. Castle? Westward? This must be the castle here. Oh. This sign's a little bit different. Usually we get like a lesson about the history of the place, but this one's more like just an actual sign. Or maybe it's a red herring. Maybe once we get to the castle, it's actually gonna be like all bandits or something. Oi, Master oh. Witcher! Uh, come here, please! Oh, the man. Good F your stone. Vintner's contract! Wound doesn't look good. Patch that up quick if I were you, before it starts festering. If I needed medical advice, I'd have called for a healer. And you look like none such, not even a quack. <sighs> mm hmm. And if you wanted a witcher to help you, you should have thought twice about being rude. Forgive me. The pain's so blasted bad, it's darkened my mood. A foulness has made its lair in the grotto. I barely escaped with my life. I've been eyeing the cave for a storehouse quite some time. Would you look inside? For money? Guess I can have a look. Not for free, though. You know how I could have negotiated with the hermit lady? I wonder if that would be about potatoes instead of money. Well, that's closer to sensible, but still too much. Come on, it's halfway already. Here. Well, that's closer to sensible, but still too much. You're gonna give me like a hundred crowns? That's hardly worth my time. A fair offer. See what I can do. Wait here, and you need to clean that wound, trust me. A foulness. Inside the lair. Okay. Kill all monsters feeding inside the cave? Sounds like there's more than one. Oh! Giant centipedes! Alrighty then! Oh, golden oriole would be good here. As well as tony owl and insectoid oil. Oh! Check out Euphoria! Three strikes and that was it! Didn't even need any of my potions and stuff. Goodness. Doesn't seem like that's the last one though, because there's still a marker here. Wonder what happened. Blood smeared diary. Holy Lebiota must have given me a kindly wink today. Or perhaps it was mere chance and circumstance. The important thing is, I found a cave that will make for a perfect wine cellar. Production's been going wonderfully these last few seasons, and the lack of storage space has been a pressing issue. I could have hired a man to dig a cellar, but I'd hate to slow work on barreling the grapes. 
And at any rate, no dugout cellar can match a limestone cavern. The one I found is perfect, spacious and not at all overly damp. And I came across it thoroughly by accident while strolling among the rocks. My foot slipped into a crevice, and when I tugged it free, a few stones fell down into it. I listened for a long while before I heard them hit the bottom. I then walked around the entire slope until I finally found an entrance. Tomorrow, we will begin turning it into a storehouse and transferring the barrels. Later entry, hurriedly scrawled entries. Monsters in cave, huge centipedes, men barely escaped. We'll try to go again, recover what we can, must block off all entrances. Hope no one else ever stumbles into the accursed cave. Well, that's how the guy got injured, right? So he's not even the first person who's tried to use this as a wine cellar. This place is nice and big, but it comes at its own costs. Oh, Euphoria is beautiful. I love it. I love it. Huh. It's in kind of a weird place there. Right on the stairs. Hey, go somewhere else. Oh, two strikes. Euphoria, putting in some passive work. It's not as flashy as Piercing Cold, but it's nice in its own way. Especially since we're reaching end game status here, where we don't really care about how to like, you know, kill the monsters and stuff. And it's really more of a distraction to getting us where we really need to be. Well, I can assure you that the current centipedes are gone, but there's no telling that they might come back again. I can't guarantee that, but... If you still want to make this place your cellar, be my guest. And what's the situation? We're good. So, will you see what's amiss in my storehouse? Done that already. Ran into a few giant centipedes. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. And how am I to prevent them from crawling back in? Don't know. I kill monsters. Don't predict the future. You needn't be cross, Witcher. You shall get a good price on all my goods. In gratitude. Come back in two days' time. You will see the fine storehouse I've made. I'm off. See you later. Well, thank you. That is a good question, though. How can we make sure that the centipedes don't come back? Ah, watch your flim flinging step! You're the one who walked into me! Oh, I kinda love this. All the workers actually start going back into the cave to work. That's pretty cool. Are you sure you don't want anyone guarding the camp though? Because I'm gonna loot everything if you don't. Actually, there's nothing out here. Hmm. Okay! I guess our job here is done. I'm thinking we can probably go back to Beauclair again soon because we have the Manticore armor now and we can do the Master, 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 Master. And probably, if we look in the quest list here... Big feat to fill. This one is for seeing the Lebiota statue back at... Where is that again? All the way over here. Which we can also do, because all we gotta do is go collect the reward and check out the statue itself. Yeah, and it's right next to a fast travel point, too. Why don't we try going down here, check out the estate first, and hope that there is a fast travel point there, with which we will travel to the Prophet Lebiota statue, and then go back to Beauclair? How does that sound? Have we been there? Yes, we have. This is something strange here. Maybe like an elven ruins or something. If we keep going down here, it should lead into the... What is it? The Duntine Castle? Okay, we're at the place on the map already, but I can't really see much here. Oh my god, look at how big the moon is tonight. Wow. Doesn't seem like there's much here, despite the marking on the map. Okay, well, that's fine. If we keep going down, we can already kind of see it. 
There are some structures over here. It's a little cloudy tonight. But it's still very pretty. Oh, we're not allowed in. Halt! No passage. So Roderick does not wish to see any guests. This must be important later on. You're not to go anywhere. That's fine, but I'm really hoping I can find a fast travel marker so I can leave here. Usually there would be one. We just gotta figure out where it is. Mmm, maybe like back in the crossroads area here? If not, we can just go back to the actual crossroad marker. Nah, no, there's nothing here. There's some deer in the distance. Okay, that's fine. We'll just walk straight back to the marker then. Right here. And we're gonna fast travel over to the statue. Leave that area for a bit. And it's complete! Be gone from my sight! Jeez, I'm here to praise Labiota. Don't you want new followers? That's not the kind of attitude you should have if that's what you want. And verily I say unto you, if men were but to let the prophet Lepiota's teachings into their hearts, this world would be a more pleasing place. Thus raise a your tip voices of the hat to, to the mine. victor. Oh prophet Lepiota! Oh, Prophet Lepiota! Oh, Prophet Lepiota! I swear I'm pretty sure we've heard this already, the last time we were here. Teachings. I swear to live according to thy teachings. And never to stray. Mm, impressive. Ah. If you want to look at a statue properly, though, we're standing so close to it that you can't really see the full thing. Helped you finish the statue like you asked. Master, what would I have done without you? Countless throngs of Lepiota's followers will praise in prayer. And you'll pay me, right? But of course, your reward. The investor is a serious man of enterprise. Our plan foresees mass conversions. With the donations that will follow, we aim to recoup the cost of production in three to five years. Everything has been calculated, you see, down to the last decimal. Mm. Good luck then. Farewell. 800 crowns. Not bad at all. This is a really big statue, though. Look at Prophet Labiota's foot. It's like bigger than my entire body. My god. That's nice. Maybe this is something that Merton would be happy about. Actually, though, I don't know. Spending this much material, labor, and money to make a statue... That seems to kind of go against the materialistic stuff that Mern gave up. It's all about that lifestyle, right? Oh, that's just an armorer, right? That's- oh, it's a grindstone. Kind of wondering why I didn't check this out even though I had a thing here. But there's no question marks near me right this moment. There is this right here. Not that close by, but uh, how about we travel to Fox Hollow Get that, get that, come back, and then go back to Beauclair for new armor. Yeah? Does that sound good? I think that sounds pretty good. Uh, hold on. It's right here. The God brings peace to our domains. And of the three people that we commonly see around here on the wanted posters, we got Strigan. We got four fingers, but the last guy we haven't seen yet personally, have we? I don't know his name. But if we really want to figure it out, we can probably just start looking at some of the posters around here again. Ho! Oh! Let's go around these guys. I don't want to see them. No, 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 no! Why are there freaking spiders in broad daylight? That's not how things should be. Oh! Huh? 
tons of base right here. Okay. Wow. Okay, in that case, um, I should probably meditate a little bit first. We're gonna be fighting a lot of people here, which means it's a little bit unfortunate because it's almost daytime again, which means the Tony Owl isn't gonna be indefinite. But more importantly, if I want to take advantage of Euphoria, then I gotta reapply some potions here. Ekimara, damage dealt to foes regenerates vitality. Okay. Night Wraith, Geralt's maximum vitality is increased with each foe killed. Okay. Wyvern. Each blow landed increases attack power until either the fight ends or damage is taken. No, nah, damage taken will happen pretty often. Grave Hag. Each foe slain accelerates vitality regeneration for the duration of the battle. Ooh. Well, this one's gonna be pretty good for a Hanzo base because we're gonna be fighting a lot of people, right? And that's 79% already, so maybe we'll just leave it at that. I think I'm ready now. Oh. But I don't have a key. Where do I get a key? Oh, you know what? Maybe it's like, um... Would it be here? Because if you look on the... Oh, actually, if you look on the map here... The Hansa base is right here, but if you look closely, there's like a little castle behind it. I was thinking, though, maybe we should go to this one first, because I think if they successfully light a fire, then people from around here get called over as reinforcement, right? But if we kill off the reinforcements first, then that's not a thing that can happen. And also, maybe this is where we get the key? Praise be the prophet Leviota! And as I thought, there are people here. Not monsters. Oh, now you're Mistake. No, the one who wants to die is you. Oh! Whoa! Hold on. Oh my god! We actually gotta be a bit careful here. It's because I don't have Tony Owl. But with Tony Owl, my toxicity level is a tad too high now, and I'm actively losing health from that. Oh, but it might be okay, because whenever I'm hurting somebody, I also get health back. So maybe I'll just keep eating food for now. So does anybody here have the key, or... Do I find the key somewhere else? That was a lot of crowns. Wet letter smelling of soap. Blastro. You and your rat-diddled helpers deserve a hundred hard flogs to your bare bums for what you got up to last night. I ordered you to prepare edible fare for our band. After eating that stew you made, even Amara, who drinks pickle juice by the quart and washes it down with rancid goat milk, was spurting up both ends. What'd you put in there? Dog diarrhea? If any of you steps anywhere near the pots again, I'll chop your heads off myself. Tomorrow, I want to see your whole sodden kitchen crew by the river. You're going to wash our Hansa's dung-stained knickers until your knuckles bleed. Loth. Loth. That must be the Hansa leader here. Were there more people inside? Oh, this might be the way to get into the base. Because are we walking back into that area? Yes. All right, we found it. Should probably take Quinn or something. Praised be the prophet If we use Ard, it's great because people die fast. But at the same time, we can take advantage of the thing where we get health back for every hit we do to people. My goodness! I'm too late to surrender. As usual. The Warhammer guys and the Shield guys, they don't fall down ever. I'll get you first. Thank you. 
course you wouldn't die to that. Oh, God, he swung faster than me. Not the second time, though. So this Hanza is kind of underground. It's a little bit different than the other two. Gonna pick all this up, because I can, of course. Onions everywhere. Everywhere. Oh. Thank you. We gotta be careful about the whole signal fire thing though, right? Right now, I don't see anybody... Okay, it's just kind of random people walking over here. Two in a row. Two for one. And now we got Mr. Shield guy here. Oh! Wow. Instant dismemberment. I think that might have been one of the perks we have. Ooh, you can hear spiders outside. Perfect. Show me what you got. Even the fireplace fire got put out. Oh, what? I'm over encumbered. <gasps> I didn't know I was holding that much stuff. Oh, dang, but we're only a little bit into the base right now. How are we gonna live? I don't even think I have room to take the fiend decoction here. 70. Yeah, I can't take it. I gotta drop something then. Um. Actually, how about I just don't pick anything up for now? Because theoretically, after we defeat the Hans, there is gonna be an armor guy here, right? So I can sell all my stuff to him then. But, like, right this moment, I guess I'll drop maybe. This is better than what I have. Wow. Guess I'll drop this for now. This is worth 500 crowns though. Not that we're actually going to get 500 crowns for it, mind you. I'll come back for this stuff later on. Because I'm pretty sure we will come back. After we're done here, some armorer or blacksmith guy should come up. Okay, there is somebody with a signal fire thingy. Around me? Uh, the signal fire is right here. Why, you oh. Mafraka. oh! Oh my god, you must be joking me. <laughs> I wasn't even looking at the guy. As soon as I walk up here, Somebody starts chasing me from the bottom, right. but the signal fire guy... They have to get this past me if they want to light the fire, right? So maybe I don't have to worry about this too much. The little icon makes me nervous though. <laughs> now which one of you guys one hit killed me earlier? Probably wasn't one of you guys, right? I'm guessing it was a Warhammer person? Okay, hold on. I can't take these swords right now because of my weight. But I can take the crowns. The signal fire person is... Where are they? I don't know. If we go here... We're going back to the beginning, or... Why the bum sweat did you come here? Oh! Let's dance. For four fingers, Hans! Oh, they've heard already. Love half breed. You stand no chance against us. Your Hansa felt smaller than the other ones, but it's probably because nobody got Damn to call the signal fire. Yeah, it was actually quite manageable this time, except for that one guy who one hit killed me. <laughs> you have a shield, and that's annoying. Why don't you come attack me or something? Come on! Come here! 
I should be the one saying that to you. Ooh. No chance against us. We should still be a little bit careful here. The axe really doesn't last too long. But he's gone. This guy seemed kind of fancy though. He had like a hat and everything. Fist tech. Alcohol. Diary. Rust covered key. <laughs> and now I'm over encumbered. Most entries cannot be deciphered. Some pages are smeared with grease and ink blots. Day 143. Now that's what they call popularity. They've been coming in droves lately to join our Hansa. In fact, I've had to start turning some away. Sadly, most of the newcomers are dung-booted jelly diddlers, send that lot to demand coin from a caravan. And even the horses would soil themselves laughing. That's why I've put Carlo in charge of drilling the new recruits. He's pitched camp to the south of Link's Crag, that rock where the witch lives. The witch that we saw before. I despise such old wenches like plaguey vapors and would gladly fix up a pyre for her, but after what happened at the Cutter Inn estate, bet my own danglies that was her doing, so he'd best leave her be. Yeah, you talk the big talk, but you can't walk the walk. Day 167. It's decided. Within two sundowns, everyone's going to be talking about my band's ride through Fox Hollow. My lads deserve some fun, and there are plenty of men to gut and wenches to diddle there. So we're in for quite a ball. Rumor going around claims clay pots grow from the ground in those parts. If it's true, perhaps I'll gather up a gaggle of those presents, put them to work digging up the pottery, and we'll open up shop. Every organization's gotta stay nimble and agile these days, so we'll pivot. Instead of slaughtering merchants and knights, we'll sell teapots. Day 182. Felt like my spirit was trying to crawl out of my bum. That's how badly our kitchen crew botched our last batch of vittles. When knights errant attacked us after that, not a man among us was strong enough to hold a sword. We've gotta get our hands on a real cook. Only thing more dangerous than an imbecile with a sword is an imbecile in charge of a cooking pot. Perhaps a quick raid of the cockatrice? Fisherman's chowder would be a pleasant change, after all this stew-to-dog doo-doo. Maybe that's why I didn't really have a tough time fighting this guy. Cause he has a weak stomach right now. <laughs> wow, this guy's got a nice throne room here though. I kinda like it. <laughs> Some random coins on the tables just cause it looks good. Love it, that's great. Ked Merkvid blinders. Ked Merkvid. Ooh. This is all very fancy. I don't mind being over encumbered right now because I think after we walk out of here, the armorer guy is gonna come. Okay. Actually, not too much here. All right. All three leaders of the Hanzas taken down. Beauclair is now a little bit safer. And I think this marks the 13th night contract that we're doing too. Start no pros. So we're getting closer and closer to making Beauclair even safer. <laughs> Wonderful. Damn it! Watch where you step, fool. Talk to the commander. Do you mind if I loot the stuff behind you? Or... Actually, first of all... Is there an armorer around here? Yes. If I look behind me. <laughs> it's gonna be a bit of a slow walk away, but... We'll manage. Oh, he must be next to the grindstone and stuff. Long live! Duchess Anna Henrietta. Yes, yes. 
You're trolling on an empty stomach. Oof, dreadful. Do you want to eat the kind of stuff that the people here were eating? I heard it didn't taste too good, but if you're interested in that... Oh. Thank you. We're almost there. They cleaned the place up. The previously dead people. Are they even here anymore? I don't think so. Oh. Oh, no, I dropped that earlier. <laughs> she was you did our work for us. If it was your job to exterminate them, yeah, I did. They were like an ulcer on Tucson's derriere. Loath half-breed. The most cankerous of them all. This loath half-breed, part elf? You might have had a look before you tore out his innards. He was called half-breed. Rumored to be half-elf. But in truth, who knows? Besides, how is one to know a half-elf? By one normal ear? One pointy? I've no notion. Probably right. You mean they really have two different ears? No. You really don't know a thing about them. <laughs> I didn't particularly notice that person looking like an elf. Although his name should have given it away. Maybe if we looked a little bit closer, there were some clues. But I'm pretty sure... They have the same ears on both sides, and that's not really how being a half-breed works. Mind if I have a look at your goods? Be my guest. I've top-notch armor. But as an expert, you'll see that for yourself. Please let me sell everything to you. Da-da-da-da. They've got a lot of money. Can I clear you out? That would be amazing. Some of these swords are better than what I'm using right now, my god. Just because it's been so long since I've upgraded my armor. Speaking of which, this would probably be a good time for me to go back to Beauclair so we can get some new armor. Uh... That is the same as what we have right now. Okay, cool. We'll just sell that off then. And I'll sell this. Don't sell the Beauclair set. Yeah, even these random boots here are better than what I have. Yeesh. Not the Beauclair stuff. Beauclair stuff. Not Beauclair. These pants seem to match with the doublet even more than the Beauclair trousers. My god. The boots. Gauntlets. Okay. We should be good here. They've still got $3,000 though. Can I clean them out some other way? These ones? I guess we can try using it once we're out of here. Um, do you want to just buy the stuff? Got a whole lot of it. I'm too lazy to dismantle all of this too. It's worth a little bit. Maybe you can like dismantle it yourself and make new weapons out of it. Yeah. I'm just really here trying to take all your money, that's all. We're getting close. But that's it. You don't take junk. So I can't sell you that. Okay, fine. Today, I'll leave you with 500 coins. Can you at the very least repair my stuff though? Okay, thank you. That should be all then. So long. What are your needs, master? You've already fulfilled all my needs. Thank you so much. All is in order. We have to be really careful about our health here because I'm really being drained by my very, very high toxicity right now. But I think this is it for us anyway, so all we gotta do is find the exit out of here. And we should be good. A tip of the hat to the Tawny's victim. Can I go out through the other way? The way that was locked when we first found the place. I'm not sure, but we're out of here already anyway, so. Damn, oh my god! 
Random drowners! Harassing horses! Unforgivable! Get out of here! Oh! Scary. That wasn't Roche, though. That was probably the horse of some random guy inside here. Maybe one of the guards. Oh! Did I not loot that earlier, or just money? Okay. Cool, thanks. Now that we're done that, means the question marks around this area are gone too. Wonderful. Let's get back to Beauclair then. That blacksmith slash armorer guy has been waiting for me forever. And I got all the diagrams now. I feel like implicitly inside, I'm already thinking of getting the manticore armor. Cause that's the one school that we never got armor from throughout the entire game. But at the very minimum, if we can, I do want to see what the other ones look like. Even if it's just a little picture on the crafting screen. This is Fox Hollow, the place where they said they sell pots and stuff. Because for some reason they grow here. But this is our second time here, and we still haven't seen any pots. That new cognac, the Monarch Brothers Distill. No one gives a all you want and sport. never have a hangover. Not even a tinsy wincy one, they say. Why you? Don't go me. Cook it to myself something horrible. Actually, give me a second here. Did we ever look at this? Yeah, because usually on the pile of dead bodies, there's something here. Orders on a bloody parchment. To Peter Crooked Nosehook, you've got until dawn to gather and equip your units. You'll strike in two groups to break the opposition faster. The lads won't defend long, and Fox Hollow has no garrison to defend it, so you're in for some good fun. Don't kill them all at once. Send a few alive to me here, at Tulison's. Load up all the loot on wagons, and once you've taken out the defenders, send runners and I'll send men to help you transport the goods. And check what the deal is with those pots said to grow straight out of the ground in Fox Hollow. Perhaps there truly is some business for us there? Loath. P.S. If any chef or baker or anyone who knows his way around a pot crosses your path, don't kill him, just bind him and send him straight to me. Hmm. I think this is because when we first came to Fox Hollow, was it a abandoned site? And that's why we have the bunch of dead bodies here. Because those are all bandits. They summoned ghosts there. All in the nude. Why? Nude ghosts? <laughs> okay. Beauclair is pretty much straight down here. But the last night for higher contract is in this area. Not last, but second last. The other one is... Oh. Go to the place to collect your pay. This is 14, right? Where's 15? Is it this one? I can't really roll over it. <laughs> Well, whatever, I guess. Beauclair. Master, 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 master. This guy right here, and the man from Sintra is right next to Anna Henrietta. Why don't we go do some Gwent with the tailor guy? Ah, welcome back to our northern dandy. Not gonna make fun of my northerner clothing again? In the mood for a round of Gwent? Mmm, what card did we get last time again? I don't quite remember. I don't see anything that really stands out here, so I guess it doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, okay, we'll just go on like this. Oh, opponent's leader cancels your leader's ability. Dang. Mm, maybe that's one less thing to think about today, though. Scorch, Avalok, Cambi, Gondro Dim, Gondro Dim. 
Light Longship, another muster, great. Shield Maiden, Clan on Grey Warrior, these are tight bonds. Yennefer, Ermion, Geralt of Rivia. Mmm. Scorch? Is that really gonna be useful here? Nilfgaardian deck is good at what? Spies? Yeah, I guess, I mean... Clan on Kraid? Wait. No, I don't have Sarah's today. These tight bonds. Ideally, we would have one more. But they're alone right now, so maybe I'll take away Shield Maiden. In exchange for Olgear. A good exchange if you look at it in isolation. But uh, we'll have to see what happens later on after we put down the spy card. Use Gondor first. Yeah, or mm, hold on. Use this one first. Why? Because this one only has two. And I'm scared. They might have Scorch. <laughs> if I put down Gondor Dim right now. Holy God! Okay, well, that sucks, but at least I didn't put down Gondor Dim yet. I got three Gaunter cards, so that would have been an even bigger loss. Now hopefully you don't have any more Scorches here. Commander's Horn. Now I can use the Elf here. Clan on Crit Warrior. Great. Oh, wait! I got a Berserker! And I have Ermion! Isn't that the first time I've had this happen? <gasps> this is exciting! But we'll save that for the next round, right? Or do we want to win this round right now? We could. We definitely could. And if I want to do that, then the card that would be the best here would be... Olgeard, I suppose. Bit of a waste, though. Should I Scorch instead? Scorch or use Olgeard? Not really sure what the best choice is. Olgeard? If I save it for later, I can use them for morale boost. Scorching now would remove 10 right away. Um, I'll Scorch. This really depends on what comes up later on. I'll try to believe in Olgear for now. Hemdal, 11, right off the bat, because of Kambi. Now I think we're gonna be okay today. Uh, I'm kinda worried about things like Scorch and the Dragon. So these warrior guys. Yennefer, I got a medic too. What can I bring back? Not really anything that's super useful. Maybe I'll put down... <laughs> How about the Berserker? Yeah? If they have the dragon, then this Berserker is gonna go bye-bye. Oh, actually! Wait! Oh! But this, uh, Ermion! This is a ranged card, but the Berserker is a melee card. What? So to activate that Berserker, I need the actual Marjoram card? Ah, oh, no. Bit of a miscalculation here, but oh well, I guess. Not much we can do about that. So that's why you would want to have the Marjoram card separately. Because Ermion... What Berserker cards are ranged, though? Maybe the Young Berserker, which I took out of my deck? I got no clue. Hmm... Well, we're at this stage anyway. Olgeard. I think we can probably just win this one round. If we're lucky here. Yeah? Uh, Geralt's Rivia first. 52 to 36. Two cards, two cards. Doesn't seem like they have any more Scorches and whatnot. We should be good. 71 to 41. And they pass. And I got Yennefer. Woo! 
Ooh! We did it! Oh, we don't need this, but sure. <laughs> Wonderful! Didn't even get it to a round three. Thank you! 100 crowns and... Young Berserker. So let me check right now. The Young Berserker, is it a ranged card? It is! Oh, okay, so Ermion can only ever activate Young Berserkers. If we want the actual Berserkers to get activated, we have to put a Marjoram card in my deck. Oh, I'm not sure what to think about that then, because the Young Berserkers, without Ermion, they're really, really weak. Only a two. But if I want to activate the regular Berserker, I have to sacrifice a slot by putting in Marjoram. Hmm... I guess I'll try putting in one more Marjoram card here for now, in my deck, and we'll leave it at that. Yeah.